Good morning and welcome to Let's Talk Autism with Shannon and Nancy. I'm Nancy Allspaugh Jackson. And I'm Shannon Penrod. Glad to be with Good my to be friend here. here with you. Can I say one thing about the last hour? We had yes. somebody who was writing in about neurofeedback and that's something that I really want to wait and have Dr. Grand Pichet answer. So I just want you to know, because I know it, sometimes it feels like nobody's listening. Right. Um, I didn't attempt to answer that because I have I have no knowledge of that. And okay. I, I really want you to have an expert opinion on that. But it'll have to wait until we have Dr. Grand Pichet back. Okay. Yeah. So anyway. Yeah. Uh, there's for, actually a story. We're, we're going to start within the news, and there's a story about the brain yes. in the news from uh, spectrumnews.org. And um, basically, they're saying that it could be that poor coordination between the um, brain activity could yeah. be I mean, part this, the synapses are not activating together. So this article, they're calling it a pace, like a pacemaker in quotations right. for uh, the brain. That just like with your heart, you know, uh, if you have any kind of a heart issue that mm -hmm. is severe enough that it's life-threatening mm -hmm. you can have a pacemaker put in and it helps to regulate what's supposed to happen right in your heart it's a I think it's a little squishier when you start talking about the brain mm -hmm. about whether what's happening is what's supposed to happen or isn't supposed to happen. but there's a whole host of different treatments some that are already in use and some that are being discussed yes. we've talked before on the show about transcranial magnetic stimulation that's yes. one that's already being used for a wide variety and of for things. For depression and pain management and with varying success. And the truth is, is that it's begun to be used with individuals who are on the autism spectrum mm -hmm. too, with a lot of different controversial um, reports about what happens. We saw that John Elder Robeson uh, tried this and that uh, he's a very fr famous person uh -huh. who's on the autism spectrum and is very much a self-advocate and believes that it, in neurodiversity uh -huh. and that there's nothing wrong with him, that he just sees the world in a different way. Right. But he did try transcranial magnetic stimulation and reported afterwards that for the first time, for a period of time after the treatment, he believed that he saw colors mm -hmm. that in a way that he had never seen right. them before. And, right. and it was a huge emotional experience for him. So in any case, uh, this idea of using pulses to change the frequency of the brain right. so that things that are too slow. Neuromodulation. Neuro, well, there's a mouthful for That's you, Nancy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but this idea that you could train, uh, change the way neurons fire, mm -hmm. either faster or slower, mm -hmm. um, it's a very interesting concept. It is. It, I have to be honest that I don't know how I feel about it. How do you feel about it? I feel like if it's something that could be potentially beneficial, it'd be a great thing to, to explore. I mean, there are people who are very happy with the way they see the world. Right. And that would say, I don't want that. But mm -hmm. we've met people on the show who are on the autism spectrum who have said, oh my gosh, where do I get in line? Right. I'm in pain. Right. And I'd like to be out of the pain. Yeah. So it's a very interesting thing. It is. Uh, and we'll look forward to seeing uh, what more can happen with this. Yes. I know you, you really want to read the whole article, and it gets pretty in-depth. But I know for people who uh, have Fragile X, there mm -hmm. are specific um, things to look at. So I, we're going to encourage you to go to Spectrum yeah, SpectrumNews.org. News. It's a lot of woo over our heads in terms of the details. <laughs> so. and, and it gets into some very specific things. Um, and then we have a feel-good story, and then we're going to get story. to our, our, our guests, because yes. we have a lot of guests today. Uh, so the da a dad and a son, his, his son with autism, rode all the way from Canada to in Ontario, Canada, to Coney Island to ride the Wonder Wheel at Coney Island. A really amazing. And this is a 10-year-old young man who uh, did this with his dad. Their goal was to raise $20,000 for autism organizations and show everybody that people with autism can do amazing right, things. Right, they can. They absolutely can. Uh, and they arrived in, um, they, left on the, they left on the 18th of August. That's a long and they, time. Uh, 650 miles later, they were welcomed in New York at Coney Island. And I, they did this to raise been. money, by the way, yes. too, to raise 20000 with uh, with. Uh, for what it, autism organizations. And just want to say thanks to that dad who, mm -hmm. like, don't we love it when dads say, I'm going to work on a project mm -hmm. with my kiddo mm -hmm. and get involved and and make those things happen. Yes, it's Absolutely wonderful. love it. All right, so we've got big, big show for you today. So we kept our news to a minimum. Um, but uh, later on in the hour, we're going to have Matt Asner talking about the Ed Asner Poker Tournament. Okay. 
uh, at this moment in time, I don't know if you guys can hear it through our mic, so I'm just going to address it. Apparently, they've started some construction project oh, on the hear. roof <laughs> of the studio. Uh, <laughs> Oh, they wait until we start the live show, and then they decide to get out the hacksaw. Right. Uh, in any case, and then we've got quite a, an array of guests that are coming up in just in a few minutes here. Do you want yes. to talk a little bit about that? Well, we have um, author Ido Kedar, who is nonverbal, who is the first one of the first people to write a book about what it's like to be nonverbal. Amazing and have autism. insight. Yes, has now written um, a fiction book. And we're going to learn about that. And his mother, Tracy, is going to be here to talk with us. Absolutely. And Vena Tierro is here yes. with us uh, because they've got a really important event that's coming up this weekend that mm -hmm. Vena's going to tell us about. And we always love it when Vena's here. Right. Because Vena brings her own party with her. She does. We adore her. All right. So stick with us. We're going to, we're going to be back with some of our fabulous guests. the month of September, I figured I'd show you guys how to make a task completion chart to help your kids get through the hardest parts of the day. Parents have been writing into our host, Shannon Penrod, the hardest parts of the day are waking up in the morning, after school, and getting ready for bed. Please keep in mind you can always modify the task completion chart to focus on the skills that your family needs most. The template we'll be using today to make the task completion chart you can find at facebook.com slash autism live. All right, let's get to it. The materials you'll be needing are the template, cardstock, scissors, hole puncher, glue, pipe cleaner, Velcro, and photos or images. We find it more reinforcing for kids if you use images of themselves doing the tasks that you're trying to get them to complete. So what I have here to start off are photos of myself doing all the tasks that we're going to add to our task completion chart today. The first step you're going to be doing is printing the template from facebook.com slash autism live. I have it here and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to trim at the top. We don't need that, that's just totally excess. Now that I trim my three templates, I'm going to label each one with a different part of the day that we're focusing on, such as waking up, after school, and getting ready for bed. Now that I've finished labeling the templates with the appropriate time of the day, I'm going to attach the photos that go with it. For bedtime, the tasks I chose were getting ready for school, putting away toys, putting on pajamas, and brushing teeth. Now repeat this for all the rest of the day. Now that I've added the photos to the template, I am taking this along with my heavy cardstock to hold all my tokens. I'm going to line them up and make three hole punches. I'm going to take this pipe cleaner and attach the pages together with it. We're almost done putting this together. Next, I'm going to take my Velcro. I'm going to put them underneath each picture and then I'm gonna add four on the very edge too. Now that I've attached the rough side of the Velcro to the template, now I'm gonna take the softer side and add these to the tokens. You can use whatever you want for the tokens, whatever your child finds reinforcing. They could be stickers, images, spacemen, Pokemon, whatever they like. Before you use your task completion chart, it's really important that you do a preference assessment to see what your child finds reinforcing that day. Once you have that established, then you can tell them the rule for how this task completion chart works. So every time they get one of their tasks completed, they add a token to it. And the way the task completion chart functions is like a token economy. So after they put a token under each one of these tasks, they can trade it in for their reinforcer for the day. Now that you've made your task completion chart, hopefully your child will be able to use it on a daily basis and help them through those difficult times of the day. Well, until next time, craft on. Bye, guys. Can you see me flying by your side? Hello, fellow activists. Last segment, we talked about step three, get support. Step number four is don't compare, run your own race. Now, it's one thing to aspire to be like someone that's really helped their child. We all wanna do that. That's really different than keeping up with the Joneses. That only serves to make you envious, 
and full of regret. There will always be someone who has a child with autism who is doing better than yours, and there will always be someone who has a child with autism who's doing worse than yours. One morning I was talking to the mom of a recovered child who told me he had been moved into the gifted class. Well, I had heard that week that my own son, who was in fifth grade, was reading at first grade level. Now, I have to admit, I was kind of proud of him until that phone call, which put me over the edge. The green-eyed monster of jealousy. Well, later that same day, I got into the elevator as I was taking my son to clinic. There was a father with his two sons, one typical and one with severe autism. He was pretty much nonverbal, but he did make some very strange sounds over and over again. He had bite marks, scratches all over his arms. He wore mittens to protect him from himself. The father, however, had a big smile on his face. Needless to say, the universe was sending me a message that day. Don't compare. Be grateful for the progress your child has made and will continue to make. So until next time, keep running your own race at your own pace. Don't forget to stop for water and keep the faith. Parent to parent, having a compliant child is one of the greatest things on earth. But frequently we ask ourselves, why doesn't my child listen? Well, here are some tips to help us to get a listening, happy, compliant child. First, we want to make sure that we make compliance worthwhile. Whenever your child does something that's compliant, make sure that you praise them and heap rewards on them that are meaningful to them, things they really want. One of the things that we have to be mindful of is that if the child isn't compliant, we have to praise more often. Just keep it on. If, you're, if you say to yourself, there's nothing to praise, they're not doing anything that I want them to do, then ask them to do something that they already want to do. This is a really tricky way of being able to praise them. And then, of course, the last thing that we want to do is catch them doing good things when they least suspect it and make sure you keep that praise on because having a compliant child is one of the best things in life. Token economies are a great way to get to good behavior with your child. Hi, I'm Shannon Penrod and we're at the ABCs and XYZs of Special Needs Conference. And this year, for the first time, they've got something really remarkable. It's the Entrepreneurial Boutique. These are all items that have been made and are being sold by individuals who have special needs. So we're going to do a little shopping and talk to some of these fabulous entrepreneurs. Come on. My name is Molly Rarick, and I'm founder of Breed's Gift. We're a nonprofit that serves teens and adults with special needs, like Chase here. Uh, we were founded in 2013 and serve people in the Conejo Valley, Santa Barbara, and LA. Our main objective is to give our participants the skills they need to gain a more independent life. My name is Shelly Cox and um, Lisa Zalagi and I are founders of Creative Steps and Create Micro Business Enterprises. And the, the items that we're selling here today are all made by the clients who have uh, passions about what they want to make and then they get the profits from what they make after we've paid all of the other expenses. We are here today because um, I, my goal is to be independent and also I would like to share all my artwork and I would like to sell. Thinking about at his young age being a businessman, you know, it's, it's amazing. I cannot be more proud. And we are back, and as we promised, um, we have special guests here in the studio. I'm joined by Tracy Kadar and Vena Tierro, and we're here to talk about um, the young man Ido Kadar, who is, happens to be Tracy's son, um, and we're going to be hearing from his new book in Two Worlds, which is a novel. Um, is this the first novel written by somebody with, we're gonna with do autism? Prompts. 
<laughs> with non-speaking with autism? With non-speaking autism, As far as we know. Um, okay. That's what we think, and if, if there are others, I don't know of them, but there would be very few. <laughs> now, Tracy, you work in the field. Yes. Tell us a little bit about your background and what you do. I'm a, a licensed clinical social worker, uh, mental health professional, and I have been doing parenting and uh, children's mental health for all of my career. And in the last few years, I've started teaching non-speaking autistic children how to communicate by touching letters and moving towards keyboards and um, uh, iPads. Okay. And Dana, you're here because this book, the first book, uh, Edo and Autism Land, really had an impact on you, so much so as a mom, that you've really been following their story, and you've got an event that's coming up this Saturday. Tell us about it. Yes, because I met Tracy uh, several years ago at an Autism uh, Society of LA conference where Edo was the keynote speaker. And we should also interject that you're the mom of two boys with autism that, yes, <laughs> yes, a non, and a nonverbal. Yes, Son. so interjected. Right. I am the yes. mom of two boys on the spectrum, <laughs> right one nonverbal. And so when a nonverbal young man was presenting at an autism conference, I was blown away. And I met Tracy afterwards and saw Ito run away and steal somebody's soda, and Tracy <laughs> run after him. And I was like, that's me. That's my son. And so I loved them ever since. And I told my son about Ito, and he just lit up. I said, uh -huh. that was a young man who spoke today. He didn't speak, but he was able to tell us what he thought. So when the book came out, I read it to Bakari, and so Tracy kept us on her mailing list. And when In Two Worlds came out, <laughs> I saw in the small print, she said, and if you'd like to have an event, and I'm like, did I read that right? <laughs> I've got to have an event. And so my birthday is this Saturday, and I figured what better way to spend my birthday than to celebrate an awesome warrior mom and her revolutionary son and his work and I've read the book and you guys you guys get that book now mm -hmm. if tell you us, know anything about, about autism yeah. yeah okay so Anthony is the main character and he's stuck in his world mm -hmm. and he's going through all the stuff all of our kids went through and mm -hmm. and the mom is going through all the stuff we went through going to experts and the experts mm -hmm. saying things and the instincts of the mom not really matching what the the experts are saying and then the dialogue in this nonverbal this non-speaking uh, kids head is just liberating right it lets us that. know that they were there all the time so anyway the journey continues he finds a way to communicate the same way that Tracy's teaching young men and women today and eventually he fights for his education, very similar to what Ito went through. But um, Ito says this character is not him. He's no. just drawn from his life, as all okay. good authors do. And he represents the culture of the non-speaking people and the autism culture. And it's a wonderful journey. I don't want to give much away, but my son, who's here in the studio, he read it. And having a, a non-speaking brother, he and I, it's opened up dialogue for us mm -hmm. to talk about his brother. So you guys got to get this book. And okay, but this Saturday is a perfect opportunity to yes, get the book. Tell, tell us, us where, about the event, yeah. where it is, what time. The Legacy Center, started by four moms who have non-speaking uh, children, mm -hmm. uh, created this wonderful place to educate and provide resources and events and education for people who are non-speaking and those who speak, developing them cognitively. They right. are hosting this event with us and we are celebrating Edo. We're having other non-speaking young men and women uh, share their inspiration that Edo as a trailblazer led for them. And uh, it's gonna be great. And you guys should come, it's on Variel. 6011 Variel in the Warner Center. Okay. Right around the corner. At what time them. again? Not in At the, 4 p.m. Not okay. in the Warner This is, it's uh, oh, yeah, in Chatsworth. Oh, no. It's it's located in the Warner Center. It's it's right around the corner. Oh. Yeah. Well, I'm glad we got that straight. I know. So that you'll know where I'm to go. I'm going the wrong place. <laughs> it's, uh, that's a very cool thing. Now, Tracy, yes. 
Uh, Ido couldn't be with us here today, no. but we want his voice to be heard. Yes. And we had the opportunity to send you questions, yes. which he responded to yes. in the way that he would have responded had he been here yes. from his iPad. Can we, would you Absolutely. like me to read a couple of the questions? Yes. Um, so let's start with one of the questions we had for him was before you were able to communicate, what memories do you have and what was the most frustrating thing? And, and I've, I've thrown this at her. It takes okay. a second to set up, which is which are the realities of using an iPad. Okay, okay, so go ahead. Let's make sure we got the volume right. Before I could communicate, I remember getting lots of ABA and other therapy. ABA. It consumed my whole life. The most frustrating part was that it worked on the wrong stuff, but I couldn't show it or tell anyone what I knew. I was so locked internally. I understood fluently, but I still got drilled on basic vocabulary and flashcard pictures because the specialists erroneously mistook a motor disability for a language processing one. Okay, so that's very interesting that he was mistakenly, he was underestimated what he understood yes. and could communicate. His yes. receptive language was there. Yes. His expressive was just different. Yeah. And it was more of a motor situation right. that he couldn't, he had the words that he wanted to say, he just couldn't motor them out vocally, but they were there. Yes. Which had to have been frustrating. Terribly frustrating. Not just verbally, but gesturally and facial expressions mm -hmm. and the ability to control a pencil to write. So it really is kind of like a locked in syndrome where you're moving. <laughs> Yeah. Right? And you're moving nonstop, in a sense. Wow, very frustrating. Mm -hmm. Our next question we had for him was, when you, were learning to, uh, when you were learning to communicate, what was the moment when you realized that you could communicate? What was it like for you? What did you feel? My mom realized it first. It was emotional and exciting, but no one else believed it, which was very frustrating. There are a lot of opinionated, close-minded professionals out there. But eventually my parents took me to Soma. I was seven and I was one of her first students after she moved to the U.S. from India. I got fluent enough to convert some of my bigger skeptics. Communication is a basic human need and I believe a right. It has opened my world, allowing me to get a normal education and to become a writer. And Tracy, why did they not believe that it was him communicating? What is, what is the issue there that, that plagues this kind of communication? Well, the, in the very beginning, it was because um, I actually had to hold his hand, because yeah. that's how I discovered it, yeah. by him writing underneath my hand. And um, of course, everybody thought that I, the, the phrase was, I was inadvertently, right. you know, um, Expressing my own thoughts because so you were of, picking the words for him. That, thought. Yeah, that's what and it, not even being aware of it. Yes, right. That's what everybody thought. So this is why we we had to try to find somebody who could teach him to do it on his own, moving his own arm. And Soma had just come to the U.S. at the time. In fact, we saw her in her apartment. She didn't have uh, um, halo. She yeah. didn't have anything. No, and um, and it, and she even then people who are taught one thing could not, they would look for reasons why it was not possible. They weren't looking at, you know, the amazing accomplishment and what he was doing. They were looking at trying to find out or figure out some way, some message was being transmitted to him that he was picking up through telepathy or whatever it was, um, or her brushing his leg or who knows, you know, what things people were saying. And it just took a while, you know, because it's a progression of skills. He got more and more and more fluent. And I think at this point it's pretty, it's pretty difficult to deny because he sits on, it's on a, the iPad's sure. on a table and he's alone and he's yes. moving his own arm. Yes. But even then if somebody's looking for something, they'll say, well, somebody's sitting two feet away from him and they'll still it forget, you know, we even though he's typing his yep. own words on the iPad. Correct. And Correct. it took him a Correct. while to do it. He illustrates in Edo and mm -hmm. Autism Land how he had to force himself and tell himself to shut off the autism side of his brain so he could really focus and make his hands do what he needed to. He would tell himself, do this, I've got to prove it. And mm -hmm. he worked so hard on himself just to get that 
level of accomplishment. Well, and what an extra layer of frustration when, right. when mm -hmm. you've accomplished something and people don't believe that you've done it. That's, yes. I can't even imagine and, what and, that is. And it's all dramatized mm -hmm. in Into World. Yeah. There we go. And boy, is it dramatic. And mm -hmm. I want to hear more about this book. So I just want to ask one yeah. more question that okay. we had on the iPad is what do you want people to know about your new book? And then we're going to have a reader come in and read from the book. Absolutely. Into World says my second book. My first book, you know, in Autism Land, was a memoir. Into Worlds is a fictional novel telling the story of Anthony, a boy with autism who doesn't speak and lives in two worlds, his inner sensory world and his outer world of therapies. You meet his family, the professionals, the forces that keep him stuck, and you, the reader, know he's trapped. You move with him as he finally learns to communicate at the age of 16. The book tells his story, a family story, and the impact of so-called scientific treatments and how they affect lives. Lives. Because it is fiction, I can do things impossible in non-fiction. The reader enters Anthony's mind and heart. We are part of both his worlds. Okay. It's really very, wonderful. Very interesting. So we want to take a short break, and then we're going to bring in someone who's going to read from his book right. because we want to make sure that we get to hear his right. voice. So, so one, stick yeah, with us. Stay we'll be with right us. back. Hi, this is Lisa Ackerman. Welcome back to Talk of Facts, Frequently Asked Questions and Answers for the Autism Journey. Now, this one is specifically for teens and adults with autism. I get this question all the time. What's new and exciting in the medical world uh, today for teens and adults with autism? So let's talk about them. TMS, Transmagnetic Stimulation Therapy, is something that is really exciting. Um, I met with the author, John Robeson, look me in the eye. He's a, a gentleman with Asperger's and something I hope all of our kids to strive and grow up and be just like him. He's amazing. He talked about TMS therapy and how he became more social, aware, his smile was more natural, and I definitely can better understand things around him in those social settings. Another really great treatment um, that we're seeing just a ton of research on in the last three years is cerebral folate autoimmunity. You know in the 90s they started putting folate in all of our different foods and products. Well some people they have found out and specifically a high percentage of children with autism don't process folate like what how they should go figure they don't do it the way the books say it's going to happen so cerebral folate autoimmunity is just a really exciting new therapeutic to work with your physician on and to look to see if your child is a candidate for that therapy and another common thing that we're seeing in teens and adults and we've talked about it before in talk of facts is seizures very serious issue that needs to be looked at um, abnormal brain waves or brain patterns or epileptic activity in the brain definitely needs to be addressed in children with autism. Again, I'm not a doctor, but I know doctors that can go through and work and look at the, the child and perform a 24-hour EG. What they're finding with some of these anticonvulsant or seizure medications is kids start to make great gains in speech, cognition, sleep, learning, by treating any type of seizure activity. So, and the other issue is pandas, not the cute fuzzy bears that we see in the zoo, uh, but an issue that is happening with a lot of teens and adults on the spectrum, where you see a dramatic change in behaviors um, with these individuals, and often they have an inappropriate immune response. Taka has a great white paper, so you can go look up in the pandas definition, what to test and treat for and talk to your doctor about, but know that if you see an extreme swing in behavior with a child um, that goes from one place to a very negative place, we're seeing a lot of uh, teens positively responding to treatments for pandas. Uh, and the last tr treatment I wanted to talk about, um, and I'm super excited about, and this happens to not just work with younger kids on the autism spectrum, but also older children on the spectrum, teens and adults, it's called mendability. Um, and a great study just came out of UCI in May 2013 about a multi-sensory approach uh, for individuals with autism. The whole premise behind the therapy uh, is very simple, making it a sensory rich environment so neural connections can make new pathways or at least connect in that individual. So kids with sensory issues, uh, auditory listening issues, uh, speech issues, 
they seem to really just respond to mendability. And uh, I was so excited to see that new research. More research is being done on it. And the beautiful, beautiful part about mendability is it's something parents can do on their own, administer with their child, and be uh, connected to their kid as partners in the autism journey. Don't forget in any therapy or medical intervention to work with your physician and to do proper testing to know what your child needs and what treatments to pursue under a physician's care. So there's so many new things. I could go on for hours about new treatments and excitement, but there's the top ones that just have me so geeked here. But that's another talk of fact. Thanks for joining me, and we'll see you next time And on Real Journey, Real Questions and Answers to help your autism journey. And we are back, and as promised now, we're going to have a reading from uh, Ido's new book, uh, In Two Worlds, which is a fiction book that tells the story of, a, of Anthony, a boy who, with non-speaking autism, whose life is sharply divided between two worlds as Ido himself was when he was um, 16. And this is, as we know, the first book, the first non-fiction, first fiction book released by a non-speaking author with autism. So Ellie Bildner is here with us to do some reading from the, from the book. Chapter one, Beach Day. Anthony enjoyed going to the ocean. He loved the cold water on his hot body. He loved the hot sand tickling his bare feet. He loved the sensory pleasures of the ocean breeze on his skin, the white caps breaking and the seabirds running after the waves. He enjoyed finding seaweed that washed ashore and stomping on the air bubbles. Seaweed was enticing. It twirled and trailed after Anthony in fascinating patterns. Putting it all together, the ocean was a huge rush, thrilling every sense, even taste. Anthony, take the seaweed out of your mouth, his mother yelled. The three boys were playing in the sand. Mark had prepared a long path meant to funnel the tide. Little Gary played with his toys, attempting to build a tower of sand. And Anthony, who had resisted all attempts to get him to make his own tunnel or tower, was sitting nearby, running sand through his fingers and loving the feel. He stared, mesmerized at the sight of the sand tr tumbling and falling columns to the sand on his feet. He had to taste it. The urge was overwhelming. Oh no, not again. Anthony's father jumped up. No, no! He brought a towel and wiped Anthony's tongue. The people lying closest to Anthony's family were staring. Give him some water, his dad yelled to Anthony's mother. I, I can't get it all. Then he stared sternly at his son. No eat sand, Anthony, he said in clipped, broken English. No, bad, bad. Part of Anthony wanted to eat more sand just because he hated baby talk so much. Compulsions were hard to take. They were like a body ordering a mind. It wasn't as if Anthony enjoyed a mouthful of sand. It was gritty and tasted salty, and he felt a bit like gagging. He saw his brothers pretending they weren't with him. He saw his father's shame. If Anthony could have explained, he would have told his parents that he had to obey the compulsion. It didn't matter that the sand was gross in his mouth or that he looked like a strange oddball to the stranger's who were staring with such curiosity. His body ordered him to eat sand, so he ate sand. His impulsive acts were like a lizard hanging out on a rock and without thought ambushing the cricket that wandered by. Like the lizard, Anthony lived with impulsive actions governed by his primitive brain. But unlike the lizard, they often were not functional. A lizard eats his cricket to survive. Anthony's impulses, like pulling petals off flowers or eating strangers' leftover scraps he found on the tables in the mall food court, or putting sand or seaweed in his mouth, seemed idiotic, harmful, or just plain weird. But he had no means to resist these compulsions. It isn't good, Anthony, his father said. He took Anthony by the hand to play in the waves. Gary took his father's other hand. The moist sand vanished under Anthony's feet. Anthony bounced up and down on his toes and waved his arms in the air, excited. The three of them jumped over the approaching waves over and over. Finally, Anthony tumbled forward and brought his hand deep into the soft, muddy sand. There was no stopping himself. He put a handful of it into his mouth. I can't take this any longer, Anthony's father muttered. He brought Anthony and Gary back to the towel. He did it again, he 
he told Anthony's mother. I saw, she said. Maybe we should go home. No, 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 cried Gary. It's not fair. He was right. The family obeyed Anthony and his impulses too often. I want to stay longer, please. He has autism, Anthony's father yelled to the staring strangers. They turned their heads embarrassed at being noticed. Fine, let's go play ball, he called to Gary and Mark. And maybe, he suggested to Anthony and his mom, you two can stay here on the towel. Anthony's mom gave him a snack. She poured sand on his legs and dug holes in the sand with him. He started to calm down inside. His mom sang to him and he snuggled next to her. Then she took Anthony by the hand and they went for a stroll by the shore. He felt the velvety sand under his feet squish between his toes with every step. He felt salty and damp. He was happy. When they came back to the towel after a long walk, Gary's tower stood, pale-shaped, made by inverting damp sand into a multi-tiered edifice. Anthony had to obey. He stepped on it. Okay. I want this book nominated for a Pulitzer. <laughs> I'm serious, you guys. I mean, it, it's for revealing a culture, and this novel reveals a culture that's never been spoken of that's true. in this way ever before. And it's only $75, <laughs> okay. the application, but we lived that experience. Yes, we do. I, I, we do, and you've lived it. And You've lived it. Yeah, and people don't understand how intelligent and how bright mm -hmm. these non-speaking uh, individuals with autism can often be, right? Yes. Yeah. So it's just, it's groundbreaking. It really is groundbreaking. So once again, the event, what time, where is it? This Saturday, September 8th at the Legacy Center in Woodland Hills, 6011 Variel Avenue, right on the corner of Oxnard and Variel, and come celebrate this revolutionary author, Ido Kadar. Ido will be there. Okay, thank you thank all for you. coming. Thank we you appreciate for it, us. and thank you for reading. Okay, and we're going to be right back. Um, with Matt Asner talking about the Ed Asner Poker Tournament. Can you have a life with autism? Absolutely not. Give it up right now. No, that's not true. I'm here to tell you, you can have a life with autism. I have a life with autism, and it's a good one. When you start on this journey, you don't know what's going to happen. You really have no idea. You're kind of in shell shock for the first couple of years. It could be as long as five years until you realize, I do matter to people. When my son was first diagnosed, I remember thinking I would go anywhere and do anything for him. I didn't even think about it. I just came way at the bottom of the list. However, after a few years passed, I realized if I'm not important anymore, then that means no one's gonna be here for him. So how do you have this life with autism? It's not easy. It's never going to be easy, but it can be done. It's really all about support. And support is a word you're going to hear a lot when you deal with the autism power structure. And that means schools, government agencies, um, social service agencies that can help you. There are things out there that you don't even know exist. So once you start connecting with other parents, you're going to kind of find this treasure chest full of things that only they can help you unlock. But once you get that support, it could be a babysitter coming to your home. It could be a therapist to take your child out and get him into the community. You can either leave the house, do your shopping, you know, go to a farmer's market, do whatever you want to do. And it doesn't matter if it's really only about 5% of your time. As long as it's dedicated to you, that's going to help. It's all about your willingness to find support and your willingness to accept change and your willingness to kind of stick up for yourself because you're battling for your child and you have to realize you guys are connected. You know, there's a bond between you and your child that can never be broken. And if you're doing well, then your child's going to do well. So finding what you need to be happy, whole, and healthy as a person is a way that you can have a life with autism. And that's important, too, because if you have a life with autism, you can also give your child a life, too. 
Welcome back. We're back. Uh, very excited. Big show. Right. Uh, we, big show. A big, big show, uh, big uh, largely show. because you're here. Oh. For people who don't know, Matt Asner is here with us. From the Matt Asner, is it the Center for Excellence? I always mess up the words. School it's, 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 it's the, the Ed, Ed Asner, Asner Family Center. Not the Matt Asner. The I'm Ed sorry. Asner Family Center. It's okay. Center. It's like I it's had a lobotomy. Nava Asner, break. Matt Asner, <laughs> and Ed Asner. So. Uh, okay. And this is a fairly new... Uh, very new. March. And I mean, this is like, you know, it's, I, I would say this has probably been seven, eight years in the making, right. I would say. Yes. Planning Long it for seven, planning. eight years. We talked about it a little bit. Right. And, um, and it's something that uh, that through our collective uh, experiences through the world of autism, we realized that we needed to kind of take care of the whole family. And so that that was the kind of impetus in, in, in us putting this together. So the and, mission for the organization is... To care for the whole family yes. as well as the child with autism. Yes. For, so for the for the child with special needs, we would have arts and vocational enrichments. Mm -hmm. And and the interesting thing about this is we're not um, there. There's going to be some of our own programs, mm -hmm. but a lot of the programs we're we're having in, into the center are programs that are established and that we feel are progressively, you know, enriching to the community. So something like Spec Labs right. and, and uh, Miracle Project and and uh, autism, autism works autism now movements. and autism movement therapy yeah. um, these are all programs that um, that we have have been through and that we respect mm -hmm. so it's it's a, a wonderful kind of opportunity to kind of put everything together in one uh, location and and have people thrive in one location right right it's a fabulous thing and now you've got an event happening on Saturday we do one of one of a couple of events we have coming up yes okay talk to us so we have a we have the Ed Asner and Friends Poker Tournament coming up on Saturday. It's the sixth time we've done this. We did it mm -hmm. done it for other uh, uh, nonprofits before this. Uh, so Autism Speaks was a recipient, and and so was uh, was Autism Society. But now uh, it comes but now home. it's the Ed Asner Family Center. So uh, I'm excited. We're doing it in Culver City at the Playa Studios. Uh, we got a lot of celebrities. Tell us some uh, of the people coming. that are coming. Well, we have uh, Tom Arnold. Right. So I'm hoping maybe he can. Bring some tapes with them. Just joking. Just joking. Um, uh, we have uh, uh, Diedrich Bader. We have. Um, I love. We have uh, Elizabeth Perkins, um, that you'll remember from Big. Right. Uh, we have. And um, she just was in that. Lou Diamond, Diamond Phillips. Lou Diamond Phillips. Ed Sharp Begley Rogers. Jr. Ed Begley Jr. Michael Chiklis. Uh, I don't know if Michael's okay. coming or not. He's he was on the list, okay. but I don't know if he's coming or not. I don't know whether this. You know, is it, the, the wonderful thing about this is that. Eric Roberts, who uh -huh. I just saw in Star 80. If you haven't seen that film, it's like okay. insane. Um, the wonderful thing about this poker tournament is you, you, you come to the poker tournament. If you play poker, you sit at a table. You, you're almost guaranteed of sitting with a celebrity. Right. And it's just, it's just fun. It's, it's like, uh, you know, leave your ego at the door. Right. Everyone's there for the same reason. And we raise some good funds for, for a worthy cause and have a lot of fun doing it. Good. Every good. event has its own flavor. But this event is the wild event of the of the season. I'm you sorry, you never know what's going to happen. You don't know what's going to happen, yeah. and and I like to say that you know you go to a lot of events and there are celebrities and there are people who really want to meet celebrities. Right. Let's be honest right. about this, right. right? And sometimes you know you get to meet them in passing. But I really think that this event is the one, if you want to be rubbing elbows with celebrities, this is the one to go to because you sit at the table with them and play poker and then somebody gets out and people congregate and conversations and things happen. Yeah. We, there are no barriers. And there were some, there and, was some and it's, stuff. It's, it's a wonderful thing. I think Lou Diamond Phillips was very excited that Randy Rainbow was there last year. And I, I was trying. And you got to, it on film. I was trying to get an interview with Randy Rainbow because I'm a huge Rain, Randy Rainbow fan, and I was so excited that he was there. And Lou Diamond Phillips was there, and um, mm -hmm. Andy Dick was there. So it was the four of us in a room together. And just we, just saying that gives me goosebumps <laughs> right? and, and makes me worry. And I was just <laughs> hang, I was hanging out with the four of them trying to get an interview with Randy Rainbow. And Andy Dick was making a lot of comments. Right. And I said, I'm going to go live, you guys, on Facebook. And that's when Lou Diamond Phillips said, just record what I'm about to do. <laughs> 
and then he shined Randy Rainbow's shoes. It was quite a moment. Uh, well, I narrated it, and he was, you know, she, I, I'm telling you, I will be talking about that uh, on the day of my funeral. Sounds like it a was, wild time. But it wasn't it was. the most wild thing. No. We, we even put out a crazy. video that were like, here are some things that happened, because some crazy stuff happened there that was fun. I'm not talking crazy bad. No, um, it's just, it's you know, people come there, and it's just fun, and you're playing poker, so you're, you're automatically in this kind of mode of, you know, Fun. Yes. And uh, and the great thing about the other great thing about the, the tournament is that it's not just a tournament. Tournament. It's a party. It's a big party. Exactly. Right. You you don't have to play. If you don't play poker, you can come and kind of enjoy the food and drink uh, and games and that we have there. Watch the poker players. Yeah. Yeah. And see. Yeah. And it's see fun. Them in and there are things that you can bid on. There are things yeah. being auctioned that yeah. are yeah. great. Opportunity yeah. drawing. You have a live auction too. We do. Okay. Uh, we did and a, a lot trips. of good money is raised okay. yes. for a very good cause. Yeah. Tell us again how people can find out how they can go it's there. It's very easy. You can go to pokerwithed.com. Okay. We made it very easy. Okay. Pokerwithed.com and register there. I believe that we have no more poker seats left. But there which are. Which is great. But just they, watching it, seats, right? We have, you know, you can a come couple. and enjoy and have drinks right. and, and food. Right. And it's cheap. It's $100. So, uh, and then. I think there's a waiting list for poker. So if you want to get on the waiting list, just let us know and we'll put you on a waiting list. Okay. I think, you know, as people start leaving the game, you can kind of enter the game. Right. Give right. you a bit of an edge on maybe winning too. Right. I don't know, if you right. come in late. Yeah. Right. And right. honestly, if you're in the area, best hundred dollars. If, you, if you've always wanted to go to a Hollywood party that is yeah. like worthy of talking about, this is a hundred dollars and you're gonna get some cool things to eat and you know a bar. I right. mean, we have an amazing, cool. amazing uh, uh, caterer who's doing. An, I mean, she read me the, the list of food that she's doing, uh, and her name's Gwen, and I, I can't Keenley, Gwen Keenley, okay. and and she's uh, she's incredible, uh, and she's making all this food. So, so great food. We need people drinks. to come and eat it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, so. You should go if you absolutely can't because you live in Timbuktu and there's no way that you can get here by Saturday. I will say that we will be live on the red carpet at five o'clock. Yes. Um, and we will be covering the red carpet. We don't cover the poker tournament because we, you know, you're not allowed to be filming during the poker tournament. Although I can't promise that we won't do something in the back room like we did with Randy Rainbow last year. <laughs> That's fine. I can't, I, but you know, it's only at Matt's discretion, of course. But um, you definitely want to be watching the red carpet because stuff happened on the red carpet last year that was crazy. Um, and but if you can get there, hundred dollars, best hundred dollars you can can ever spend if you at all like to be where things are happening. Now, um, for people who want more information just about the center, where should they go? They should go to edasnerfamilycenter.org. Okay. And um, it's all there. And uh, we have a lot of amazing things coming up. We're going to announce a gala that we're having on November 15th. Okay. Uh, that uh, is going to be really exciting. I'm not going to let the cat out of the bag okay, yet. Don't. But okay. We're honoring three serious. people uh -huh. and a major... Performer is performing, and it's okay. going to be a lot of fun. Uh, so we'll announce that probably later this week. Uh -huh. And I can come back and talk about that Please. later. Yes. Uh, we have a, an auction that we're doing through Heritage uh, Auctions um, uh -huh. in October. That's going to be a lot of fun. It's all comic book art, original oh, comic book art. Oh. And it's all going to the center. So we're excited about that as well. Matt, Very you good. always do things that my husband gets excited about. They're all, you well, always I'm a come geek up, at heart. So. <laughs> but you all, well, and my husband is obviously, but you always have these things that my husband is like, oh, that's so cool. <laughs> Whenever I say, oh, this is happening, Matt's doing this event, it's always things that he gets excited about. Well, good. I'm uh, glad. Well, uh, yes, and his head will spin if you're doing uh, comic I, book art. I like graphic doing, novel art. Excuse me. Oh yeah, well this this is all <laughs> kind of like that. So I like doing things that are that are. Um, uh, that push the envelope a little bit, mm -hmm. and um, so all the stuff I do is kind of scary to some people, but it's all <laughs> kind of fun. <laughs> scary, I think it's exciting and innovative and well, cutting edge. It's out there, it's and it's fun. fun. So you've got a lot going on. We do, we do, and the, we have to have a lot going on, right? You know, because we we want to open this. The, the center wants to open in October, in, in beginning of October. Okay. We, you know, we're looking at properties. You mean have a per permanent home? We we're looking at permanent homes right now, and you know, it's important that we raise enough money so we can sustain and, and get out there and Do really it. help this community. Right. Because but you have but you haven't been paralyzed. You guys just did an amazing uh, camp. No, we did ed. a camp. Yeah, we did yeah, a camp. Yeah, you had uh, camp this summer. Yeah, and, I, and I'll tell you, I give my wife. 
a hundred percent of the She's credit amazing. because Nava she Paskowitz asked her. yes and she she you know she went out there and she said you know we're going to do a camp and uh, that's and I was like really we're going to do a camp <laughs> she said yeah we're going to do a camp and we did a camp and it was amazing and it and went really well I was uh, I was won over by by her incredible work right. She's, Amazing. Well, she is a tour de force, and uh, the camp was amazing. I got to come, uh, I came twice, but actually got there on time once to be there for your sort of daily closing ceremonies that oh. I was saying earlier, Incredible. that uh, you know everybody gets together and stands in a circle and does a different exercise in the day that I was there. They went around the room and asked everybody, if they wanted to, to say one word for what they were experiencing, yeah. and I said in, uh, that I was inspired. Yeah. I said inspiration is the word. I get misty thinking about it because it was really incredible what you guys had going on. Really incredible. And, and to see the progression that these kids took, uh, you know, throughout the camp. You know, they started a certain way and they, they ended a, a, a totally different yeah. way. And they were all, you know, wonderful to watch. It was wonderful to watch them. I was lucky enough to go on, on a field trip with them. And that was incredible fun. And, and I, can I just say, too, that you guys walk your talk. Um, that you had individuals of all abilities mm -hmm. there, and you had um, young people that were on the spectrum that were working as, I don't know what you call them, but junior counselors that well, were there to support yeah. the staff. That's really important to us, that, that, we, that we hire people who are on the spectrum and, uh, you know, who walk the walk. And, yeah. um, you know, we had an incredible uh, young woman, Amy, who, who uh, did the art class, who uh, is on the spectrum, and, uh, and a gentleman, Jack uh, Brazil, who was incredible. Uh, th these are all incredible people who have a lot to offer society. And, and um, you know, we, we hired them because they were the best person for the job. There right. you go. And, and they were incredible. And you're going to continue to incorporate this in the Ed Asner Family Center activities? 100%. Hiring people on the spectrum yes, that's to do the one of the reasons we wanted to start this is we right. wanted to, we wanted a place where people could work and they could thrive and they could uh, they could grow and uh, and and you know that's what that's what we're going to do. Okay, it's an amazing amazing thing. So again, poker tournament this Saturday. Uh, it starts the red carpet starts at five. What time do you actually start playing playing poker? Oh, probably. 530. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Guess. Short red carpet. But you never uh, know. Once again, where they Well, the red, they... carpet, the red carpet starts earlier, I think. So you might want to check oh, that. So the red okay. carpet, I think, starts around 430, okay. 4, 415 or something right. like that. Right. Because registration so. and cocktail and buffet is at 5 o'clock. Yeah. Oh, okay. So we'll get people in, get them seated. So you know what? Probably 6 o'clock. Okay. But who's counting? All right. Poker tournament starts at 6 o'clock. Is that what it says? Oh, okay. I should know she knows I more than I do. Including so. silent and live auction. Okay. So okay. that's you got to be there by six to and catch all that. And we got some that. great, great, great stuff. I've been hearing that your auction stuff is really, yeah. uh, it's always on point, but I'm hearing it's extra special, fabulous this year. Yeah. And, that's and what you, the rumor is. You can actually walk away with the TV tomorrow night if you're lucky. That's part of the opportunity for okay. me. Nice TV. And, and I don't know if you've ever seen Love Sack. Oh yeah, love so sack. We, we, What's we, that? We, oh, the we best. have a, a giant. Why it would love a love sack? Yeah. Oh yeah, okay. we have a giant love sack that is part of our opportunity drawing. Okay. okay. And you know, what I'm, is a I'm love sack? Can I ask? I actually could sleep on that thing. It's so comfortable. Well, there's a lot of different kinds of love sack. Uh -huh. but the original love sack was like a really uber high end bean bean bag chair. chair. Okay, but like, but it's not a bean bag. bag. But it's, it's but right. it's the bean it's bag so chair of your dreams. Okay. <laughs> and and then they went into making different types of furniture and and but it was all it's all high end, really good stuff. And honestly, some of our centers have uh, a love sack in them, and uh, okay. our kids on the spectrum. Oh my gosh! Yeah, our center, our center is, our center has love sack. Our there camp you go. had a love sack. Okay. We we have, and we're gonna have them in the center. They're incredible. Okay.